Last week, I asked you guys what you think I should name the game I'm currently developing. It's a fantasy machine-building roguelike set in a monster-infested magical universe. Dragon Engineer. War of Gear and Flesh. Hearts of Metalleria. Connection, Ship Affection, or even something as simple and awesome as The Behemoth. I'm still a bit undecided and is of course very early in development, with much of the story and world-building being a bit of a mystery, but thanks so much for the great suggestions and keep them coming. This week, Liam was 100% focused working on our brand new mega game dev course, so this left me some alone time to work on the new video game. The first thing I worked on was movement. It's such an insanely important aspect of many game experiences, and the one we had in place just felt way too floaty and unresponsive. So I rewrote some C-sharp code, added separate variables for a move and turn speed, and now we have something that feels a lot better. Although from a viewer's point of view watching the devlog, this change is far from exciting. So how about I give you a peek at this first boss character concept. In last week's devlog I was saying I wanted a mix of steampunk and Middle Earth style fantasy. Having a large flying castle full of hard working oily goblins should fit the bill. It always starts with an idea. Then, for important characters, I'll usually make several thumbnails and iterations before making a final decision and going through thinking, colouring, and of course, animating. So this concept should fully come to life by next week. Back to the present, I redesigned the speed mill building, so your ship begins with a whopping move and turn speed of zero. However, I decided to let the player start with one speed mill, which adds 1.3 to your move speed and 0.7 to your turn speed. Add enough of these suckers and you'll get a fast and responsive flying machine. However, adding extensions to your ship adds weight to it, which decreases move and turn speed. Next up, I added petrol, which is basically fuel, and I later renamed it to energy. Of course, please note that so much that you see in this devlog will likely change and be improved in the future, such as this UI up here. This is of course all a work in progress, and if you have any cool ideas on how to improve anything from game mechanics to art, let me know in the comments. Back to energy. Basically, each building and extension will consume a certain amount of energy every second. When you reach zero energy, your ship will stop functioning. Whether or not this means game over isn't certain yet. For now, the ship simply gets pulled down by gravity. Of course, I then made energy makers, which counteracts this slow, dramatic loss of fuel. I really like the fact that now the player will not only have the ship's main HP to worry about, will also need to keep a keen eye on energy and always have some space available on his ship for energy makers. I was then tired of staring at this ugly UI, so I spent some time making that a little more visually pleasing. Of course, in the final game, I plan on having dozens and dozens of unique buildings to choose from, so this will likely be redesigned. With any creative project, I know it's important just to move forwards. I rarely have all the answers, but at this point, I've grown quite confident that they'll somehow show up by just putting the hours. So speaking of moving forward, I'm excited to share another cool addition to this world. Research Labs. Whereas gold is mainly used to purchase new buildings, research points, which are produced by these research labs, will enable us to unlock new buildings, extensions, and more. You won't be able to unlock every single building during a run, so you'll need to make choices as to how you wish to spend your precious research points. I'm guessing this will lead to many different machine builds and strategies. Finally, I thought it's a shame just to have vicious monsters populating the game world. I envision different biomes filled with creatures and danger, of course, but also floating islands filled with treasure, potential allies, and maybe even interesting bits of lore. So I began with something quite classic, floating gold nuggets. This felt like another cool opportunity to add in a new building, the Collector. This small flying mech collects gold and any other collectible tidbit I might add to the game in the future. Now I'd say that exploration just feels a lot more rewarding and interesting since you never know if you'll stumble upon a juicy gold nugget. Of course, you'll need to place gold mines to generate a steady and reliable source of cash, but floating gold just helps with that dopamine rush and gives you a small boost early on so you can actually start building things without having to wait for the mines to generate lots of cash. So, it's been a pretty good week, quite happy with productivity and so on. Of course, you can always do better, and that's where we come down to the question of this week, which I have for you guys is what would you say is your number one tip for, for focus, for avoiding distractions? So I'm working from home and I'm constantly bombarded with temptations and possible distractions, you know, like going on my phone, browsing YouTube, or playing other games. It's, const it's a constant, you know, fight to remain focused. I'll be trying a couple things this week to try and, you know, boost my productivity and my concentration levels. But if you guys have any great suggestions, then leave them in the comments and I'll definitely try some of the best ones. And if you want to learn how to make your own video games, we have five game development courses on Udemy which teach you exactly how to do so. For example, you could learn how to make a platformer adventure, a top-down shooter, or even an online multiplayer game. Links are in the description.